Hello, my name is Mark Ugo Lopez, and I'm the Director of Global Migration and Demography Research at the Pew Research Center. I want to talk to you today about some of the work the center's been doing around the U.S. Latino population, but also the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on Latinos, both in terms of their experience with the virus, but also the impact on their economic lives. Um, but first, before I talk about that, I want to give you a sense of who the Pew Research Center is. We're based in Washington, D.C., and we're a nonpartisan, non-advocacy organization. Our purpose is to provide information to the public, and we take no positions on policy. But with that said, let me share with you some findings that we've uh, collected over the last few years related to the nation's Latino population, about population growth. As you know, the nation's Latino population is growing rapidly and continues to do so. It's reached over 61 million people, or nearly 61 million people, in 2019, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. And what's also striking about this is that when you take a look at Latino population growth over the last decade, about half of the nation's population growth alone has come from Hispanic population growth. This is continuing a story that's been in place for uh, at least two decades now, where Latinos have been a principal driver of U.S. population growth nationally. And that's going to continue to be the case into the future. But also, when you take a look at where Latino population is growing, you can see that the Latino population is growing fastest, actually, in the upper Northwest, in places like North Dakota and South Dakota. But the South as a region continues to be the principal place, or the fastest growing place, I should say, for Hispanic population growth, even though we have some fast growth happening in Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Meanwhile, states like California and Texas, while still growing, aren't necessarily the fastest growing states among the nation's 50 states in the District of Columbia for Hispanic population growth. We've also been tracking the ways in which the population likes to refer to itself. So how do Latinos describe their identity? And if you've been following this, you probably have noticed that more and more people, more and more organizations, celebrities, media, uh, 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 companies are using the term Latinx to describe the population of people who self-describe themselves as Hispanic or Latino. But what does the population of people uh, itself say about these terms? Well, first, are people even aware of it? When we ask Latino adults, have you heard of the term Latinx? We find, for example, that about three quarters say that they have not heard of the term before. And when we ask whether or not people actually use the term to describe their identity, in total, just 3% of Latino adults in the United States today tell us that they use the term Latinx to describe their own identity. So interestingly, a term that seems to be becoming more popular and more widespread in use isn't quite known by the public it's meant to describe. In addition, when you put the term Latinx up against terms like Hispanic or Latino or some other term, and people can choose some other term, you'll find that it is Hispanic that by far is the term preferred by the nation's population of people who trace their roots to Latin America and Spain. 61% of all adults tell us that that's the term that they would prefer to use to describe the Hispanic or Latino population in the United States. You'll notice that Latino is second to that with 29%, and Latinx is at only 4% uh, among Latino adults. I just wanted to share some of these findings to put in perspective and give us a, some, some context for the findings I'm going to share with you now related to the COVID-19 impact on Latinos and also uh, the economic impact of COVID-19 on the Latino population in the United States. One of the things we've been tracking at the center is doing surveys asking the U.S. public about their experiences with COVID-19. And first, it's, it's important to note that Latinos, just like Black Americans, are more likely than other groups of U.S. adults to say that they know somebody who's been hospitalized due to COVID-19 or somebody who has passed away because of COVID-19. About half of Latino adults say that in our survey, in our most recent survey that we did where we asked this back in August. These numbers are undoubtedly higher now given the surge of cases and surge of deaths that are occurring nationwide due to COVID-19. We've also found that when we talk to Latinos about whether or not they've taken a test for COVID-19 and tested positive or are pretty sure that they themselves have had uh, COVID-19, you'll find that, for example, 22% of Latino adults tell us that they're either pretty sure or had a positive test for COVID-19 uh, over the course of the, uh, of the pandemic. That's higher than it is for gen generally for U.S. adults. Only 14% of U.S. adults say the same. But it's also notable that 7% of Latino adults tell us in our surveys that they've tested positive for COVID-19. Again, a higher share than any other large racial or ethnic group of Americans when you look at the data that we collected back in August. 
What's also interesting though, is despite the impact directly of COVID-19 on the lives of Latinos and people that they know who may have actually uh, come down with COVID-19, or they themselves actually testing positive for the test or being pretty sure that they have COVID-19, the share of Latinos who say that they would get the vaccine when a vaccine becomes available has actually declined over the course of the last few months. Between May and September of this year, the share of Latino adults who say that they would get the COVID-19 vaccine when it became available has fallen from 74% to 56%. Now, this isn't unique. This is something that's happening across the U.S. public. And the U.S. public uh, has generally become somewhat more, uh, has had some doubts about whether or not they themselves will get the vaccine, um, uh, despite some of the recent news that we've seen around vaccine advancements. But it's notable that Latinos, just like other groups of, his, of Americans, have declined in the share who say that they would get the uh, coronavirus vaccine once it became available. The impact of COVID-19 is not only just on health and on the personal lives of Hispanics, but it's also something that has impacted the economic lives of Latinos as well. And the Hispanic unemployment rate is uh, spiked uh, in April of this year. It reached over 18.5%, according to the U.S. Federal, uh, US uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. This high unemployment rate um, was the highest among the largest racial and ethnic groups, by the way. And it's the highest we've seen the Hispanic unemployment rate over the course of the last two decades about, at least going back to just before the Great Recession. Now, what's also interesting here is that we were at experiencing record lows in Hispanic unemployment rates just prior to the Great Recession. So the unemployment picture for Latinos was looking really positive just prior to the COVID-19 outbreak and the pandemic coming to the United States. Since the since the uh, uh, this, this peak of 18.5%, the Latino unemployment rate has come down. It is now no longer the highest among the largest racial and ethnic groups. Uh, we will be getting some new data in December that will tell us about the unemployment rate of Latinos in November. But still, it remains uh, high and remains above where we were just prior to the COVID-19 outbreak. This unemployment rate story is really striking when you look at it by gender, however. One in five Hispanic women were unemployed in April. And the unemployment rate for Hispanic women continues to outpace Hispanic men and really hasn't come down. Now, this isn't unique just to Hispanic women. It's actually happening with women generally. And it's actually got a two-part story to it. It's not only about unemployment, but also people not being in the labor force because many women might stay home to uh, take care of childcare needs as children are at home because schools are closed or daycares are closed. But the other part of the story is immigration. When you take a look at foreign-born Hispanics and U.S.-born Hispanics, both experienced a spike in unemployment, but foreign-born Hispanics or immigrant Hispanic workers have actually been able to uh, return to work at faster rates than their U.S.-born counterparts. And so you see a growing number of Hispanic immigrants back in the workforce and therefore their unemployment rate falling. All of this is interesting because it has household impacts. When we talk to Latinos and other Americans about whether or not somebody in their household has been laid off or lost a job or had to take a pay cut because of COVID-19, you'll find that among Hispanic households, 41% say, yeah, somebody in their household has been laid off or lost a job. 51% uh, or half will say that they had to take a pay cut uh, because of COVID-19. And when you take that together and whether or not one of these two things or both have happened to a ho to, to an individual, you'll find that 61% of Latinos tell us that somebody in their household either lost a job or had to take a pay cut. By far the largest share of any group of uh, racial or ethnic group in the United States. And again, pointing to the large impact and the, uh, and the wide impact of the COVID-19 economic downturn on Hispanic households. We've also asked Hispanics about many other things related to, uh, to their financial lives. And this uh, slide shows you a number of things that we found around Latinos being worried about, uh, about their finances. 57%, for example, worry about paying their bills. 51% uh, are concerned about the amount of debt they have. 50% are worried about healthcare costs. About half say that they've had to take a pay cut or reduce their hours or demand for work, a finding I just showed to you earlier. But notably, it is Hispanic women more than Hispanic men who are having to take pay cuts or reduced hours as a result of the coronavirus outbreak. Um, also, many are worried about being able to save for retirement and 45% worry that they're gonna lose their job. And this is really true, particularly of Hispanic women. 54% of them tell us that they're worried about losing their job because of the coronavirus outbreak. 
I want to end by talking a little bit about some of the national uh, uh, Latinos and their views on national economic conditions, because the economy was actually the top issue that Latino voters pointed to when we asked them in October, what is the most important issue for your vote? It was closely followed, by the way, by COVID-19, healthcare, and racial and ethnic inequality. But I want to focus on where Latinos see the national economy going uh, just to set the stage. Um, we were following uh, assessments of the national economy among the U.S. public and among Latinos overall, and generally the share of Latinos who rated the national economic, uh, national economic conditions as excellent or good has declined from about half who said things were excellent or good in January uh, to only 18% in June. But we also see that Latinos have grown more optimistic about the next year. So a growing share say that they expect economic conditions to improve. By June of this year, about half said that they expected economic conditions to improve. Now we are uh, continuing to pursue uh, research in this area. So stay tuned for more work from the center on the attitudes of, uh, of Latinos around economic conditions. Uh, but we should have some new information on that out sometime before the end of the year. Finally, is the worst yet to come when it comes to the coronavirus outbreak? And how do Latinos feel about whether or not the, the worst is behind us? You can see here that attitudes for the US public and for US Hispanics have improved when it comes to whether or not the worst is still to come. Even so, 70% of Latino adults tell us that they think the worst is still to come for the country uh, with regards to the coronavirus outbreak. That's down from 75% in April. But Latinos haven't quite shifted as sharply as the U.S. public has overall. Um, uh, in June, we found 59%, for example, of U.S. adults felt that the worst was still to come, but 40% felt that the worst was behind us. Now, this question, uh, of course, is tied to the time of the summer. So it reflects what was happening in the summer of 2020. As the coronavirus, surge, uh, coronavirus surges again, uh, across the country, attitudes here on this question may have changed again. So keep that in mind that this is a constantly changing environment when it comes to attitudes about the direction of the country and whether or not the worst is still to come around the coronavirus and COVID-19 outbreak. I'm going to stop there. Um, you can find more of our, of our work at pewresearch.org or you can follow us on social media. And uh, if you'd like to be in touch, you can reach me here with my contact information or uh, reach out to our communications manager, Tanya Arditi, who could be reached here as well. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure and I look forward to our conversation. <laughs>